going. So welcome everybody. Thank you so much for coming out to our uh, information session for the Medical Humanities Program at UCSB. I'm Jack Bailey, Program Manager, Administrative Program Manager for the program, and I'm going to share a few screens with you, get some admin questions out of the way before we get to the real meat of what Medical Humanities is and how it might benefit you and your career. So I'm going to share my slides there, and everybody seeing those okay? Thumbs up, I like it. Okay, let's go, let's go. Whoops, here we go. Oh, my mouse is acting funny suddenly. And there we go, okay. So, just a few slides. Looking at the agenda for today, give you a lot of opportunity for questions and answers uh, from former students and Dr. Brzezowski, our lead instructor for the program. But first, we're gonna talk a little bit about PACE. Uh, there's a, uh, I have a hunch that many of you have never heard of PACE. And so I'm gonna talk briefly about that. Uh, what is the certificate that we're offering in conjunction with Dr. Brzezowski? Uh, talk a bit about the, uh, the tuition and some really, really good news related to the tuition. And I'll more about that in a few minutes. So jumping right in, what is PACE? PACE is Professional and Continuing Education or Extension. Uh, any, all UCs across the state have an extension. And some of them have been changing their names recently because nobody knows what extension means. But basically, it's a public face of the UC system where the, anybody in the public can come in and actually take UC classes if they're not impacted. That's one thing extension is. But it's also professional education, professional courses and certificates, kind of practical professional content that's not really part of the UC mandate, the UC mission. Uh, much more theoretical uh, academic content. PACE does the practical professional hands-on stuff like paralegal, business administration, uh, human resources, digital marketing, EMT, which uh, many of you are familiar with. That's what we're up to, that practical stuff that doesn't fit in the uh, regular academic curriculum. That's what we do. So courses and then combined courses for, uh, for certificates. Um, as I've said many times already, hands-on, project-based. A lot of times you will do projects in your, in your PACE classes, which then, of course, you might be able to uh, bring to an interview or discuss in an interview, something you've done with the knowledge you've learned at UCSB and apply it in a more practical matter in the, uh, in a, in a, in a PACE course, extension course. Often taught by local industry professionals, not always. Um, I guess, Dr. Brzezowski, I guess you're kind of a local professional and, and campus instructor, so you're a little of both, but about 80% of our classes are actually taught by people who are in the HR field or digital marketing or business or legal. That's who teaches it, not UCSB professors. It's the people who are actually doing the work now. Okay, uh, medical humanities certificate is a brainchild of uh, Dr. Brzezowski. I get about two years ago, I think it was born and uh, came into, came into uh, fruition last fall. And uh, basically two courses that you need to look at two PACE courses, INT 410, 411, and they're offered, as I, you can see here, in fall and spring, and yes, I will be sending these slides to everybody afterwards, so no need to take copious notes, not that you would be. Uh, two courses, six units with PACE, and then another 10 units from, uh, you choose a, from your electives list. I'm not gonna show it to you now, but there's a list online on the website, which you'll, you will have, where you can see, I think it's 30 to 40 different classes in the humanities where you need to pick, pick, pick just 10 units from that list, gets you a total of 16 units and you can you earn the certificate. Um, is it possible to make substitutions on those electives? Yes, maybe you see something, something on the list that looks like something you've taken but it's not the exact course. You can petition to me, actually then I send it to humanities and fine arts, get it approved and very frequently classes are approved as petitions. So uh, that's a possibility if you've got you want to do that to so talk to me about that later you'll get my contact information okay tuition don't get too, too startled here pace or uh, extension in general is a is a uh, it pays for itself there's no state funding in a uc extension program and so we have to pay all of our bills all of our overhead all of our teachers everything and so the course cost is 795 dollars per per but that said as this is the uh, introductory years for the program there's already a 50% discount on that tuition. So you'll see 795 on the website. It's actually half of that for each course. So it'd be a total of 795 for the two courses, if that makes sense. 
a 50% discount. But wait, uh, what's, what's the Ginsu commercial? There's more. ATFA is offering a scholarship for up to, I think it's 12 to 15 students per quarter can apply for a 50% off scholarship on top of the student discount. So yes, literally, you're not paying for anything uh, in, in a given quarter where you receive the HF, HFA scholarship. It's literally free. Pace pays half and, and HFA pays the other half. So that information is okay, linked here in the website and the PowerPoint you're gonna get. So really, really good news uh, there if you apply for the scholarship. So please consider that. Email me if you have any questions. Um, I'm gonna, I'll give you that, that information at the end of the presentation, my contact information, but right now, as promised, I want to be done. I want to introduce Dr. Krzysztowski and his team. All right, um, let me share my screen here. I see some questions are already um, popping up in the uh, chat box. Um, so thank you, Jack. Uh, my name is Jason Prostowski. I am a local practicing emergency physician. Uh, I also have a master's degree in public health. I know someone was asking questions about public health and I work within the public health and EMS community. Um, my email is right here. Feel free to take a screenshot there and email with me with any specific questions. Uh, and I'm also the academic coordinator so I give uh, one or two lectures throughout the um, throughout the uh, the medical humanities program, but most of what I do is I coordinate everything. So um, I want to just kind of go over a little bit about what some of our goals are with the medical humanities certificate program, and then really make it conversational and hear from Lauren and Spencer, who um, are students that completed our. We just finished our first year of the program and uh, Lauren Spencer can talk a little bit more about what the student uh, perspective is. So this is a Norman Rockwell painting, and you know, part of the humanities is we look at, uh, at, at the humanities as it applies to clinical medicine and public health. And the humanities is a study of, of that which, uh, of the human condition. Uh, music, art, literature, philosophy, history, culture, um, understanding a, a lot of these little more subtle human components of clinical medicine. A lot of you are probably science students and a lot of you are probably looking at, at like what this boy is looking at, uh, this, this physician's medical degree on the wall while he's about to get his, uh, his vaccine um, and understand that um, though the science, especially while we're having this conversation during uh, the great pandemic of 2020, is absolutely essential, so too is the human element. And that is really what we're trying to, uh, we're not trying to give you a mastery of it because it's gonna take your entire life to really develop your appreciation uh, of the diversity of the humanities, but to sort of lay the foundation um, of what is gonna be your lifetime study of the humanities. And this is another block painting by a Japanese artist, uh, Hakusai, uh, The Six Views of Mount Fuji. And a lot of times I like to do this as an example of kind of what we try to do with the humanities, uh, with the medical humanities program, is when we think about clinical medicine and public health, uh, a lot of times we, we get very fixated in our silo of looking at it through one particular lens, of looking at uh, COVID-19 through the lens of virology and the SARS-CoV-2 virus and the immunology and the cytokine storm that it creates. But it's also important for us to look at clinical medicine and public health through history, historical context, through ethics and distributive justice, through um, uh, literature and narrative and recognizing that stories have an important role in uh, better understanding our patients and where they come from. And here you can see Hakusai puts Mount Fuji in every single one of his block paintings. And sometimes it's, in, it's the subject, sometimes it's in the background, and sometimes you're at the summit and you don't even realize that you're there. Um, so I like to use that as an example of, uh, of the humanities. So kind of just to review what Jack said, uh, the Medical Humanities Certificate Program is a one year, you actually you can complete it in one year or you can spread it out throughout your entire UCSB undergraduate education. It's offered through PACE. There are two required courses. One is in the fall, which is Introduction to Medical Humanities, and we're gonna talk about what that class is. And the second one is in the spring, which is the Application of Medical Humanities or Medical Humanities in the World. 
uh, you could take these two required courses, then you can take 10 units from approved UCSB electives, and I'll show you that link in just a little bit. And then once your coursework is completed, you're eligible to do a medical humanities internship, which is totally um, optional. Uh, but, uh, you know, and I haven't talked to Lauren or Spencer about what some of their ideas are, but we try to place students in the community using some of their newfound insight and perspective and skill set to, to think about um, to think about um, the, the medical humanities. Um, Jack already talked a little bit about the cost. Um, and this is our first class. This is the introduction to medical humanities. This is going to be online in the fall. Um, and I know someone had asked that question in the chat section. Uh, I do work with Santa Barbara County Public Health and I did work in the emergency department last night. So I'm very familiar uh, with how this pandemic is impacting uh, the, uh, the student body community. Uh, online is inferior, but we try to do our due diligence to uh, make it an engaging program. And I'll let Lauren and Spencer speak to that and whether or not we were effective. Uh, the first fall course is the Introduction to Medical Humanities, where we do two weeks of history of medicine, two weeks of medical ethics, applied clinical ethics, three weeks of medicine and narrative, which is how medicine is portrayed in literature and in film, and that's taught by professors within the English literature uh, department as well as within film studies. And then we look at how different cultures look at, at um, health and healthcare systems. Um, we look at the Tolstoy's Death of Ivan Ilyich. We look at the, the Pulitzer Prize winning play and uh, movie Wit. Um, and then this is Fadiman's book, The Spirit Catches You and You Fall Down, which we use uh, to really have a discussion about how different cultures look at health. Um, because if you're going to, if you're planning on a career in healthcare, you know, you can know what the correct medicine to prescribe or the right surgery to do, but you also have to understand how your patients are looking at illness so that you can engage with them at a very human level and earn trust. The spring quarter, which was completely online this last year, uh, where the, this, the 2020, is medical humanities in the world. And the subject matter that we look at is we look at spirituality and end of life. Uh, and the two works that we looked at were Tuesdays with Maury and When Breath Becomes Air. Uh, we look at, at trauma, um, psychological trauma, and how literature can be a, used as a tool to understand uh, the mind and trauma. We, look, uh, we, spend, uh, we spent three weeks looking at social medicine and social determinants of health and the relationship between poverty, structural racism, uh, and historical currents, and how that plays into health and health outcomes. And we look a little bit at Frere's book, The Pedagogy of the Oppressed. Uh, we look at literature and mental health, and how literature and narrative can be used as a tool to understand the mind um, and, and, and mental illness. Uh, we have one uh, lecture dedicated to the, the physician as activist, and we look at Kurosawa's film, Redbeard, uh, Sally's film, The Motorcycle Diaries, and Spotted Wood's film, The Band Played On. And then we start to look a little bit about mi at mindfulness, uh, at burnout and emotional intelligence. We heard from a acupuncturist and from an Ayurvedic practitioner about Eastern medicine philosophy because uh, at least a third of the world does not use the Western mindset uh, when it comes to health. Uh, and we, look at, at, we looked at mindfulness in medicine. We looked at uh, Epstein's book, Attending, which is an excellent uh, work of literature and how to think about um, mindfulness practice and how it applies to health and public health. And then we looked a little bit about character. So this is the spring and the fall quarter. Uh, the electives that you can take, um, and here's the link if you wanna click on, um, the, you, can design, you can pick a variety of different electives uh, and have that apply for the 10 units to your uh, medical humanities certificate. It's from a variety of different departments. I know I teach the underserved medicine seminar in the winter quarter, and that can apply towards, that's taught in interdisciplinary studies, can apply towards uh, the certificate program. And then uh, once you complete your coursework, you're eligible to, to, to do an internship uh, that I can help place you in based on what your interests are. And uh, we're working on getting one student um, uh, connected with the Santa Barbara County Food Bank uh, because her interests are in nutrition and in food deserts. Uh, and this is just a way to think about the medical humanities and how it applies to clinical practice. So uh, um, I wanna really bring this to discussion. Antoff Chekhov is a, uh, 
a Russian playwright who was also a physician. And he said, medicine is my lawful life and literature, my mistress. When I get fed up with one, I spend the night with the other. Though it is irregular, it is less boring that way. And besides, neither of them loses anything through my infidelity. Um, I think our goal in medical humanities, and we bring in a lot of retired physicians and active practicing physicians who participate in the discussion um, and, and can give real life application of what we're learning. Uh, one of our, you know, one of my goals as a physician and as an educator in, in medical education is I think that, um, that giving students a background in the diversity of the humanities will make you a more curious, creative, empathetic, resilient uh, health practitioner one day. Um, and, and I really believe that. Um, and uh, we'll see if uh, this thought experiment, it's, our, it's only our first year in, but we'll see uh, 10 years from now when some of you become physicians and 15 years from now from some of you, when some of you become leaders in the medical community, we'll see if that all plays out. And this is a picture of my son who's now three uh, reading Ernest Hemingway's book, The Old Man in the Sea. Uh, so at that, I'm going to stop sharing. And I see a lot of questions here, and there's a lot of other questions. Um, and I want to introduce, uh, you can see uh, Lauren Estes and Spencer Quitt, who are both uh, pre-med students at UCSB and completed the first year of the medical humanities. And I'll let each of you introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your experience, and we'll uh, open it up uh, for a more uh, dialogue-based uh, uh, discussion. Okay, I can go first, uh, but my name is Spencer Quitt. Um, I'm a senior this year. Um, I'm also the president of Fullerton Doctors at UCSB, um, and I work in the local area for a tutoring company. Um, so I'm sure you guys like have a lot of questions about what this class is and how it will be beneficial to you. Um, I ended up taking the certificate program because UCSB does not have a medical school, so there is kind of a lack of pre-medical opportunities on our campus besides student-run organizations. And so I wanted to learn a little bit more about the career that I'm gonna be going through. And it was a much better experience than I even uh, assumed it would be. Um, I felt like I got a more well-rounded education around medicine um, and learned a lot of things that are not taught in medical school. Um, Jason was telling us in the beginning of the year that medical school needs to put a bigger focus on underserved populations, on the history of medicine, um, bioethics, things like that, and they don't. And so getting this type of education will only make you a better doctor and make you more understanding of the patients you'll be serving. Uh, one of my, like two of my favorite parts of this class is the class is not necessarily very lecture-based, it's more discussion-based. So there's normally a short lecture in the beginning, and then we go into discussion using real world examples and um, identifying the different ways to address the problem, which I really liked. Uh, one of my other favorite things about the program is that it's not always just Jason and Jack and the speaker there. There are a lot of local, uh, local clinicians, nurses, uh, people from the school, that are always there to talk and always stay after because they care about the students. And, you know, we have a lot of questions as undergrad and they're more than happy to help. So I really love the program. I thought I got more out of it than many of the experiences that I've had at UCSB. Um, and I hope you guys join. Yeah, going off that, um, I couldn't agree more. I'm, I'll introduce myself. I'm Lauren, I'm a fourth year as well. Um, I am a biological sciences major and French minor, and I completed the medical humanities program last year. Um, so I think one of the questions in the chat was, can you complete it in a year? And that's absolutely possible. I was able to do that um, with no problem. Uh, but going, going off of the program, I think one of the most unique things is going coming into UCSB, I had an idea that I wanted to go into medicine, but this program specifically changed how I thought about medicine as a whole. Um, I think a lot of times right now it's focused, especially with COVID, on the process of diagnosing and treating. Um, but this program taught me that this is medicine is so much more than that and kind of gave such a philosophical perspective 
about how medicine's about caring for others and really the human condition in your community. Um, and that going off of that, one of the main points that was stressed was becoming an advocate in your community and making sure that as a clinician, you're not only going to be studying medicine and studying diseases and how to cure them, but at the same time, studying why problems are happening, the disparities we have in our communities, um, the equity that we need. And that opened my eyes up in a huge way. And that was a really awesome opportunity to um, additionally have discussions on things that in class you don't normally discuss, um, specifically just everything that's going on in the world. Every time that we'd have discussions, we could ask questions. It was a free space where you could have all these clinicians to just answer any question that you had. And I think that is a super unique opportunity that not everyone gets to have. Um, and for me, it, I can definitely say that these have been some of the best courses that I've taken at UCSB um, by far trying to think if there's anything else. Um, additionally, I think if you're coming in not thinking that you love literature, this will definitely change your mind. We learn, or we read a bunch of different um, books and poems and stories. We watch movies and it kind of gives you a more immersive, immersive experience of um, different ways that people express narrative. And then also as a doctor, how you could play a role um, in these different narratives. Um, but yeah, I'd love to answer any questions that you guys have, um, or we could go to some of the questions. Let, in the let me ask, let me, uh, cause I'm reading, I'm reading through the chat section right here. And I think some of these would be great, uh, for both Lauren and, and Spencer to answer. Cause there's a lot of questions about public health and the, you know, the, the council for public health uh, for education and public health, uh, you know, our program is not, is not accredited for, uh, public health schools. Uh, we certainly look at health equity. That is a that is a pretty consistent theme. Uh, distributive justice, medical ethics, historical context. Uh, but someone asked about the questions about networking uh, opportunities with local health professionals. And uh, I was wondering if Spencer and, Spencer and Laura, if you can talk a little bit about the discussion you had with some of the other um, clinicians who have either been speakers or have just attended and been part of the conversation. Um, okay, I can start. Um, some of the networking opportunities. Yeah, definitely. Um, I think in general, there, we have all these clinicians and if you're interested in a specific topic, um, they always have their email at the end and you can contact them and it leads to tons of opportunities. Um, I know this specific class in the fall inspired me to take INT 175, the um, medical, it, it, the healthcare seminar. And um, that really inspired me to next quarter I'm going to be a TA for that class and without this class I never would have even found that opportunity. Um, additionally there's a lot of we a lot of the clinicians come from Cottage Hospital um, and so if you're interested in either volunteering or shadowing and things like that that is definitely possible um, by reaching out to some of the clinicians um, and opportunities like that. Yeah um, and maybe the only thing that I would add to that is uh, just like all networking opportunities, you know, you're going to have to seek them out on your own. Um, this program isn't set up so that you just are connected to one of the physicians or someone and like you have to uh, put the effort in to make that networking opportunity. But, you know, a lot of them are here not as instructors. They just care about the program. Um, so because of that, they're more than happy to, you know, ask any questions or you are more than welcome to ask them about networking opportunities and in, in my experience. Also, I think for answering the question in the chat about Dr. Without Walls, um, I also found out about Dr. Without Walls through this program and yes, you can apply um, and you don't have to like finish this program before you work for it. Um, I've been volunteering for over a year now and it's an excellent opportunity. A hundred percent recommend getting involved. Um, but yeah, that's not correlated to like, you don't have to like complete the certification or anything. Uh, there's um, a couple, th oh, go ahead, please Spence. So, sorry, there was um, a question about it being held online and yes, uh, I, fall quarter, it will be held online. Uh, it was held online in spring quarter for us and I felt like I got just as much out of the program. Um, we go into breakout sessions where you're in small groups and a lot of, and almost all the time there's a clinician in there 
or you'll have the speaker in your breakout room. Um, and just in these small groups to talk a little bit about uh, the topic that's being discussed for the day you, using real world examples. So even though the class is online, um, I feel like I still got just as much out of the program. And let me just take a stab because some of these questions, there's there's a few questions there about about COVID-19 and is the program going to be predominantly online and how has that affected uh, opportunities? And, you know, the, the honest answer is, is that it's a very dynamic situation. And, um, you know, the, U the university is going to have its own policies based on what the uh, what the safety for the students are, what the safety for the faculty are, what community prevalence is, and as emerging a science um, about um, prevention, treatment, and uh, and vaccines. So you know it's hard to make a very strong statement about what the future looks like because you know in case you've been asleep the entire year of 2020, there's so much uncertainty and everything has been changing very rapidly. I can certainly say that on behalf of the, the Medical Humanities Certificate Program, uh, we are trying very hard to always think about the student's safety and the student's education um, with each step of the way. So even though um, we're not, the fall quarter is gonna be online, and I know that one of the, one of the, the underserved medicine seminar in the winter uh, is going to be online as well. Uh, we're trying to adjust it so that we can be as creative we can using the technology that we have at our disposal to maximize the impact that you have as students. Um, as far as uh, grading, uh, the course is pass no pass. Um, I don't know if Lauren and Spencer, you took the um, under you took the medical humanities spring and fall quarter. Do you want to talk a little bit about what the workload is like, the reading, and um, whether or not the the grading system was was fair? I'd be much more interested to hear your perspective than for them to hear mine. Yeah, so the class is held two days a week, and they're each an hour and forty five minutes, um, and then you have to write a paper at the end of the week. That's normally some type of analysis on what was taught that week, what you got out of it. Um, you know, so all together, it ends up being about three hours a week. Um, you have to attend the program in order to pass, you know, just put some effort in. Um, I don't know what the rate was for pass, no pass, but it seemed like the vast majority of the people pass. You know, this is something that you're adding to your education, adding to your time and you're paying for it. So why would you not get as much experience as you can? So, you know, just attend it every lecture, even if it may sound dull, ends up being very interesting um, and just adding so much more to your education. Yeah, just to add off of that, um, in terms of like the reflection, or the only homework we have is those reflections at the end of the week. And I know it seems scary, but honestly, it's just, it was just a way to gauge like kind of you reflecting back on the week for a personal note of looking back and what you learned. And I found them super helpful, not as a workload thing, but more as a looking back on the course, I now have what we went over every week and I can remind myself like, oh, I remember when we read this book and we talked about this. So I wouldn't think, or I wouldn't consider the workload at all um, anything that's unmanageable, especially I know most people are STEM majors, but um, just additionally, it's more something that you have to kind of work on yourself and be able to connect thoughts that we learned in class um, for your own personal growth, um, not as much as an assignment for this class is not based on a grade or for you to like get a certain like study a certain amount. It's, it's all about you growing from it. Um, and so all these reflections and all these assignments, the workload is basically nothing in terms of um, I wouldn't be worried about it if that was some of the questions and going off of like the reading for example I found the readings an, an awesome way to kind of get a break from some of the STEM classes I know I was in like organic chemistry and um, bio labs at the same time and actually having like passages sometimes it would just be a poem sometimes it would just be um, 
a couple pages of pieces and then sometimes be a chapter in a book, but I never found it um, overbearing. I always looked forward to it. I would leave it to the end of the night because I would love like reading some of the passages and then falling asleep. Um, so I definitely think that this in terms of work commitment is not something that you have to worry about. I see a lot of no, new chat sections uh, and I appreciate it. I know you're going to have another comment there, Spencer. I do want to just make one comment about the, the reading is that before, you know, we, when I was originally working on the course, I did a lot of homework and spoke to a lot of physicians, a lot of academic physicians um, to, to, to think about what the, the best um, readings would be. And there is no assigned reading that we as a collective faculty don't think, we, we think it's gonna, by reading it, it's gonna make you a better physician. Um, and we tried to come up with a reading list of what works of literature do we wish that all medical students would have read before starting medical school. Um, and and we, go to, we go through the assigned readings with that thought process in mind. So when you, um, when you are doing the assigned readings, uh, just know that we're not doing it to make you do it. What we're, our goal is, is, is we really think that you being exposed to it and having a foundation in it is gonna make you a better physician in the long run. And that is one of our, one of our objectives of, of what we, when we assign. And, and we also are also mindful that a lot of you are STEM students taking labs, maybe working on the side, maybe working in a lab or, or volunteering in a clinical environment on the side as well. So we try to make sure that the assigned reading and the assigned movies are, um, are sensitive to your schedules. Um, and, and I'll let Spencer and, Lo and Lauren talk on, whether, on the time management and whether or not it was a fair amount assigned. Um, yes. Yeah, so what I always have felt about reading is I feel like the most successful people in our society, you know, like Warren Buffett, Bill Gates, uh, Mark Cuban, Elon Musk, th those type of people, a lot of them, you know, they have very busy schedules and they are all proponents of reading. They believe that reading is one of their keys to success. Um, and why would you not want to learn more about the career that you're going into? I feel like all of the, readings that are assigned uh, just add more and more to your education. And there was not one of the readings that, you know, I thought uh, I didn't, you know, want to spend the time doing it. I thought they all were incredibly interesting um, and incredibly helpful to me. Um, and, you know, time management wise, I feel like as undergrads, we, uh, you know, we do have a lot of time. We're not in medical school yet, but we're having to do, you know, 12 hours of work a day. Um, so, you know, putting aside 30 minutes a day to read at night for that week, that's, that isn't a ton. And it is something that's about the career you're going into. Um, and yeah, I enjoyed all the readings. Yeah, uh, I, I can agree with that as well. Uh, full disclosure, I didn't, I was not a big reading person. I, and coming into college, I actually hated reading. Um, I never thought I would like books or anything like that. But right now I'm literally sitting in front of four of the books that we read in Medical Humanities on my desk because I love rereading them. Um, these, these readings are super thought provoking. And if you think about the realistic time commitment, um, like Spencer was saying, let's say 30 minutes, I guarantee you that a lot of people spend 30 minutes on Instagram before bed. And if you're just using that exact same time to read, um, it's going to be so much more beneficial. And I think uh, also going off like personal growth, um, this class will teach you, maybe you will become someone who likes reading. Um, and it's definitely an important skill and an important way to develop different um, perspectives about things and understand different narratives. Um, so I wouldn't say it's, yeah, the workload I would not think it is um, overbearing for sure. And also just wanted to answer one of the questions in the chat was, is this class specific for future doctors? Um, or is it beneficial for any health careers? Honestly, anything. Um, I apologize if I kept saying physicians. This course is great for public health, for sociology, even for law. We talk a lot about, about um, we talk a lot about the healthcare system in addition to um, how 
social dis social determinants of health and different public health problems that we've had. So I would say that ton, we had a, a ton of different majors who were in our class. Some were sociology majors, um, some were political science majors. It's by no means limited to um, just biology students or just pre-med. So I definitely consider this course, um, if you were interested at in all in um, either humanities, in underserved medicine, in public health, it, it covers all those fields. And, and the only thing I would add is, uh, you know, Alexa and Savannah have been asking some excellent questions, just kind of what our objectives are. And uh, when putting together the topics and the speaker lineup and the assignments, most of the students were asking uh, for, for, for coursework that was going to be more applicable to, to medical school and a career in medicine. Uh, but that being said, and, and Spencer and Lauren, correct me if I'm wrong, are, are, it really is applicable to any of the allied health careers. If you are interested in a career in nursing, in public health, and being a physician assistant, in being a healthcare administrator, being a paramedic, um, in, in doing health policy work and working at a, at a, at a high governmental level. Um, so, you know, I, I, you know, that, that, that is one of the goal. We certainly try to make it applicable. I think Lauren and Spence, you know, please add if you, if you, if you think, and then there's another, um, question here about self growth, um, which I, I'm very interested to hear how, how Spencer and Lauren have grown over the year. Uh, because part of the goal of the humanities is remember, you know, science is about asking a question about the natural world, answering that question and pushing the collective knowledge forward. Um, it, it's not necessarily about values and virtues um, and, uh, and, and that's okay. Um, and one of our goals with this medical humanities is to really acknowledge, appreciate and embrace the human condition and the human element that is medicine and public health. Um, so I'm really interested to hear how this has uh, impacted Lauren and Spencer throughout your year and whether or not it's, it's changed any of your views about your own growth mindset and, and what you want out of life and want out of your professional career. Uh, something that this class has really taught me about medicine is just how many factors that go into health. I feel like in medicine nowadays when you become a nurse a physician or something it is more about treating an illness that you currently have um and when we were doing discussions you know about social determinants of health mindfulness spirituality there are so many aspects to health um, and i feel like this class gave me a much more holistic view of the medical field and uh just health in general yeah, um, to add, I wasn't going into this course thinking that it would be a course about self-growth or self-reflection, but that ended up being for a huge part for me, um, a lot of what I got out from it, um, just in terms of, I loved how all of a sudden I got this new perspective of kind of the philosophy behind medicine and um, caring for others and just kind of the quality of what life is and how special and unique it is. Um, and going off that, I didn't really ever have like an interest in public health going into it. But now that I'm 100% sure that is something that I want to go into. Um, and that, I mean, this course in general just kind of opens you up to um, our community as a whole, both politically, um, also historically. There's a lot of things that I never even realized about our society that really opened my mind to wanting to be more politically involved. Um, and being um, more of an advocate in my society, which I feel like I dev never really had an interest in. Um, so yeah, self-reflective wise, I think it, it definitely gave me more of a drive to be more involved in my community and um, care more about social issues that I thought I wasn't interested in at first, if that makes sense. Yeah, and just one more thing I want to add to that is something that I didn't realize um, about becoming um, a physician, about going into nursing, um, anything in health, is that when you go through and you do all this schooling, you know so much more than the general population about um, healthcare. And because of that, you do take on a role of responsibility about educating the public um, about healthcare. And that's very applicable to the pandemic going on right now. Um, you know, 
the doctors and physicians and leaders in public health, they're the experts. Um, so we need to be listening to them. And it is uh, really shown me, and this class has really shown me that going into medicine also means that you need to be an advocate for health. Do you want, there's someone, I think it was Savannah had asked about preventive medicine and, and structures in society. Do you, do you want to comment at all about how our, the, 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 the course has looked at that and, 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 what that and what you've gained from it? Yeah, I feel like almost every lecture has some aspect um, about social determinants of health. Uh, you know, I'm looking through the syllabus of the different classes, um, you know, how social medicine, how someone's economic status, how their, um, you know, how their race and culture affects uh, their, their determinants of health. Um, I think that is something that is widely addressed throughout the class and something that's very applicable to the time you live in. Yeah, and the cool thing about this class is also all of the speakers are so different that um, this theme of social determinants of health and preventative medicine um, is present throughout the whole course, but you get to see different perspectives of different aspects of life, different places in the world and how they're dealing with their public health crises or crises. Um, and so you kind of get all these different avenues and ways to think about medicine. And I think that's one of the, also another unique thing that is consistent throughout the course. Um, let's see if. And, and one, one of the goals, uh, you know, the, the fall class is the introduction class where, um, you know, a historian, a professor of history teaches the history of medicine, a professor of philosophy teaches ethics. Uh, and there are, there are clinicians that sit in the audience and engage in the dialogue. Uh, the spring course is very interesting because it's a lot of people who are actually practicing medicine in the world. And, um, and it's, it's very much applied and it's very dynamic. And there's a, 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 a real marriage of the, of the, 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 the coursework and the, the, the foundational knowledge and also the application of the, you know, we're not just telling you this because we're going to test you on it. We're telling you this because it's really important that you know it because we used it when we were in the hospital last week. Um, and and that, that is one of the goals of the course. And that's why it's housed under PACE is because it is very applied. Uh, you're going to get certainly a lot of theory in medical ethics and thinking about moral theory and utilitarianism and deontology. But also you're going to get real life uh, case studies um, that you know, we're currently in a pandemic and we need to think very critically about allocation of scarce testing, allocation of scarce ventilators, allocation of scarce medications. And these principles uh, that we talk about in, in theory from an armchair actually have very real world practice. And there are physicians and nurses and health policy experts that are making hard decisions, putting these principles at play. I'm trying to take a look through the chat section. I think we've gotten through most of the questions. Um, let me just ask a question uh, because a lot of students have interests in, in, in careers in, in medicine, healthcare, and public health. A, a common question I get from students is, will this make you more competitive as an applicant? And, and I want to cut that question off um, uh, right at the beginning and say that that really is the wrong question to ask. Um, you know, instead of asking how can you become more competitive as a student, think about how can you develop insight, knowledge, skill sets, experiences that are going to make you a more grounded, uh, well-rounded uh, person that's going to add to your character and add to your insight that's going to ultimately make you a better leader in healthcare. Um, and I guess my question for Lauren and, and Spencer, and maybe you've already answered it, and you, you know, I apologize if I'm forcing you to be repetitive, is do you think that in your career, well, no, what, first of all, what are your career goals? You're both fourth years at UCSB. And do you think that this course has given you something that you're going to take with you that's going to make you a better applicant and ultimately a better practitioner? Uh, yeah, I can start. Uh, so career goals, my biggest hope, biggest dream would be um, becoming or going to medical school and becoming a pediatrician and then 
working for um, Dark Star Borders, um, I initially going into college was thinking, oh, well, I just, I've always liked kids. I've always liked, um, like the idea of medicine. So I'm just going to become like a pediatrician. Um, but then going off of that, this class kind of inspired me in branching out to serve all the other different populations of the world. Um, I'm a French minor. And so my hope is to solidify my French and be able to work either somewhere in North Africa um, or another Francophone country. Um, and I think that that part of my career goal has now become something that I'm the most interested in when a year ago, I, it wasn't even on my radar. Um, so if that kind of answer, I don't know if that completely answers the question, um, but yeah, just in terms of how this has changed my perspective, um, I think it's just given me so much more meaning and um, value behind the career I want to go into. And it's making me even more and more excited to go into something that I know I can have an impact on people rather as opposed to just being a doctor, but being someone that someone can rely on and make sure that um, they're getting the care that they need. Um, they're getting the attention that they need from society. They're getting the resources that they need to survive um, and that they're being treated as equally as everyone else in their society. And that's something that um, I don't think I was interested as much before um, I took this course. Yeah, so uh, my my career goals, I have a sister that is special needs and um, she has very severe special needs. And so, you know, going to the doctor's office um, and stuff with her, it always, you know, inspired me to work in that population. Um, so that's my career goals. But uh, kind of what this course had, how it would make you, I guess, a better applicant. Um, I work in a club on campus called Floating Doctors, the UCSB, and we serve, and we serve an underserved population in uh, Panama, an indigenous population. And if you want to go work in any underserved population, it's you have to understand their their condition, their struggles. Um, you know, it's not appropriate to go work in work in a certain population without understanding what they're going through and why their health is a, uh, is a certain way it is. So uh, I agree with Jason that, you know, asking if this program is going to, like having on your resume, if that's going to help you get into better, uh, get into medical school is the wrong question. Um, I feel as though this class will give you a more, uh, a better understanding of the healthcare system and the shortages uh, that it has currently. Um, you know, I feel we have uh, one of the physicians that comes a lot. Uh, during the program, he was on the uh, admissions committee for, I don't remember which university, but um, he said that uh, the committee, of course, you know, they're looking to see that you will succeed in medical school, but also that you're there for the right reasons, that you understand medicine, um, that you understand the struggle that people are going through, and I feel like this class gives you that. Uh, and then there's a question about, um the uh, whether or not the course addresses humility um, and how it trains to look and does it look at uh, health issues from perspectives of the community. Um, we certainly dedicate a certain amount of time to to character uh, in the course and I don't want you know I don't want any of the students or prospective students to think about this as a self-help course because it's not designed to 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 help you on a on a voyage of self-discovery, although I think that is one of the goals of university studies in general. Um, we certainly discuss character and character virtues, and we talk about, you know, not just humility, but also courage, integrity, curiosity, empathy, compassion, and all of these huge themes in medicine. And we use literature um, as a, a narrative, as a tool, uh, to have a better understanding of these big themes of the human condition. Uh, that certainly is a, is a priority in uh, the, the fall and spring courses. And certainly we hope that you will take what you learn in the fall and spring courses and that will spark some kind of interest in you. And maybe you might decide you want to be a literature minor or a French minor or a sociology minor. And you'll explore some of these themes that you have interest in. Uh, and then the next question is, is do we look at issues from the perspective of the community? 
And part of the goal of humanities um, uh, in general is looking at the human condition and various lenses of looking at the human condition. And we certainly look at not only how individuals approach illness, um, hardship, and their relationship with uh, the medical system, but also how communities and public health has been a theme throughout it. Uh, we certainly don't emphasize public health over uh, individual clinical medicine, one or the other, but we certainly try to do both. And, and I, I hope we were effective at getting those, uh, those priorities across to our students. Um, you know, I'll let Lauren and, and Spencer uh, testify as to whether or not we were effective at getting that, that across. I would say you guys are 100% effective. Um, one thing to add is in terms of looking at or training you how to look at perspectives from communities, I thought a really unique way that we got to do that was, um, and this sounds kind of weird, but we looked at um, like TV shows and movies and how much those can be avenues to be used to inform communities about either a certain stereotype or about a certain issue or whether that's public health related or societal related um but we really the class allows you to use all these different avenues such as literature such as books such as movies such as tv shows to be able to understand different perspectives of why people think the way they do sometimes or um how certain things are portrayed and also how we can change them and that's that's a big part of we do a lot of brainstorming and a lot of just discussions about um asking ourselves why is why are things like this and what can we do um, and I think that's also unique because you don't really question yourself every day and have the opportunity to ask those questions and get um, a big a different group of people who have all different backgrounds to be able to discuss these types of solutions and answers with yeah um, and maybe something else to add from that is uh, what we learned in this class is that as a physician, as a nurse, you're going to meet people um, from a lot of different cultures, a lot of different communities, and sometimes you have to change your process of how you um, address your patient based on their culture to make them the most comfortable. Um, and, you know, we did that some with the Eastern medicine. Uh, we talked about Native American populations. Um, and so understanding someone's culture and being aware of that is a humanities part of your medical education and i feel like this course uh, addresses that and again will just make you a better physician when you meet people from different communities different cultures and and if there are any students that are interested in in you know being part of the medical humanities certificate program uh, we are doing a summer seminar series that's open to the community and to all students uh, and the, the title of it is Conversations with Clinicians, Looking at Medical Humanities During the COVID-19 Pandemic. Uh, and you can certainly, I don't know if Jack, if you're listening in, if you can give the link to that so that students can, uh, can potentially listen in, because that might be something that will help them determine and whether or not the content of what we're discussing is something that will be useful in their, their ultimate professional goals. Um, uh, a week and a half ago, we talked about how um, different physicians in our local Santa Barbara community are grappling with allocation of scarcity and looking at justice. Justice is a theme. How do we make sure that when there's not enough ventilators to go around, that we're allocating ventilators in a fair way? Um, and next week, we're going we're gonna to hear from uh, three different physicians and one member, ideally from the Navajo community, uh, about how this, uh, this pandemic has really um, disproportionately affected certain communities, the Latinx, the African American, and the Native American community most specifically, when it comes to transmission and lethality. And we're going to hear them talk about some of their struggles uh, and, and looking at some of the themes in medical humanities and not necessarily talking about the science of transmission and how this virus affects lung physiology, which you may be learning about in other of your science courses, but why is it that that the Navajo uh, nation was hit so hard by this pandemic, which we initially thought was only an urban disease, but now we realize it can affect certain uh, very rural communities. Um, so, you know, I, I certainly invite students because you, you know, you're a UCSB student and you're already self-selected to be extraordinary because you attend UCSB. And, and we want to make sure that you get the tools that you need so that you can go off into a career in medicine, public health, 
um, and, and, and thrive and be able to be an, a, an agent of change. So, you know, I want, I want to be conscientious of time, but I also want to see if uh, Lauren and Spencer, if you have any kind of parting wisdom to students who may be on the fence, you know, I, they, they, they don't know if they can take the time, they don't know if they can pay the extra money. Do you recommend that a student interested in a career in medicine, public health, or health policy uh, participate in the UCSB Medical Humanities Certificate Program uh, and why? Um, yeah, so something that I would say, you know, if you're kind of on the fence, you know, going into medicine is a lifelong career. You know, you have to go through undergraduate, you have to then go through either medical school, nursing school, master in public health. It's a big commitment. And I feel like any way you can to learn more about the field that you're about to go into will only help you make that decision. Um, I, you know, again, I think that this program is really great and is gonna give me, you know, some type of leg up in medical school because I'm gonna be a little bit more understanding of the role that I have as a doctor, you know, as an advocate, as someone that needs to be conscientious of different cultures and how to um, act with patients. Um, I've loved the program. I've loved every book, every lecture that we had. And um, yeah, I couldn't speak more highly of this program. Yeah, I, I would highly, highly, highly recommend if you were considering anything um, in any part of healthcare or in public health in general to consider this program because I think it will definitely give you a perspective that is really hard to get just from volunteering at a hospital per se or getting that external, like it's, it's great to have clinical experience, but if you're truly considering making a career that you are interested in and want to stay interested and involved in um, something that's gonna make you wake up every morning and love going to work and having an investment in your job, I think that this really proves how much meaning um, your career can have and how much of a difference um, you can have in your community. And so, yeah, if, if you were thinking of anything in a health career, I couldn't recommend this course more than any other course, again, that I've taken. Um, this has definitely solidified my desire to go into the medical field um, and truly has been an inspirational experience. All right. Well, I know a lot of people have three o'clock um um, engagements and we really appreciate your time and uh, uh, I look forward to for all of the people that are listening in now I look forward to seeing you uh, over the next year and uh, if you're watching a recording of this certainly you can send uh, me or Jack an email or, or Lauren or Spencer an email we want to make sure your questions are answered because you're you're the future of medicine and uh, and we want uh, we want you to have the tools that you need to to make for a better future Thank you, Dr. Kostowski. I will be sending out the, both of the slideshows, of course, and would have, have our contact information on it and the links to the, to the PACE website. So we expect that uh, later today. Stay safe, everyone. Everyone wear your mask. So I got, I got my mask here. I'm about to leave my office. So everyone make sure that, uh, uh, that you stay safe and, uh, and, and we look forward to seeing you in the fall. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.